What the f*** is we doing? Three, two. Hey, 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 welcome back. Episode 22, Shots of Info. Cheers. Uh, for this episode, we will be going going over the topic of finance, which um pretty cool, interest interesting topic. Uh, we're gonna revise one of our episodes that we did in the past. I we talk about day trading, swing trading, and just trading overall. Uh, how does it different? I actually start picking that again as a I wouldn't call it a hobby. I want to say it is a is a it's kind of like a, between hobby and. Uh, kind of like just <laughs> funding myself to make money, you know, <laughs> like a job. It's a hobby but, that it hopefully it turns into something that, you know, you have aspirations for it to make you money and then you can make it something that you do on the side. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I'm always been in the mindset of long-term investment. That's kind of like my philosophy. Uh, I invest for the long run five to 10 years from now, and I have seen good results and a good approach. But now, since I'm unemployed, as many of you might know, um, from my nine to five, I am going into like a gig economy in a sense. So I'm doing some freelance work and trading was a good option. I was revising myself what I was good at, what do I actually like doing? And trading came to my head because I actually love finance. I, uh, when I was in college, I was doing swing trading in the past. And I did see profitable results back then, and I am um, retaking that approach once n once more now. And yeah, so I kind of want to walk you through the process of me um, going through it once again. Like, what does it mean? How I'm doing it, the tools that I'm using, and whether I would recommend people doing it um, as well. What are your thoughts? No, for sure. So obviously that's something that I was doing pretty heavily back in the day, right? Mm -hmm. uh, even working as a trainer. But the thing is, I have more free time and I could actually devote, you know, some, some quality time to researching and kind of developing the tools and techniques and all the skills. Mm -hmm. But over time, for me personally, I found that I wasn't getting the kind of results that I wanted. And realistically, the only way for you to see consistent, profitable results is by technically making trading like a full-time job, right? Like you're waking up in the morning, you're doing your research, you're setting yourself up for the day, you have these boundaries that you're gonna work on, right? Like if I lose a certain amount of money, then I'm done for the day. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna play this trade, and if I lose a certain amount of money, I'm done, but then I'll go into this trade. Or you might have multiple trades going on at the same time. So it requires you to be very effective and efficient at doing multiple things at the same time. And then when you say that you're going to do something, you follow through. Because one of the biggest problems is that you take a position, uh, it didn't go the way you thought, so then you get this ego investment like, no, but mm -hmm. I know that this thing is definitely going to work. So I'm going to stay in, and then you see it continues to drop, and then you're like, you know what? I'm going to double down because when it comes back, it's going to double my returns. And then you yeah. double the losses. <laughs> and then eventually you have to make the decision like, okay, Clearly, I was wrong. Maybe, and the thing is, you might be right, but not today. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to be very conscious of, like, if you make a plan, you follow through on that plan. And regardless of how you emotionally feel with this trade, follow through with the plan. Yes. I that You mentioned something really important when it comes to at least this trade. or uh, Many people think it's gambling, but it's kind of kind of is but <laughs> as a it, it's two in one right like it's, it it's a two on in how one. much re research yeah. you do and you got to be a very logical analytical person for it if you're emotional or if you tend uh, emotions controls you trust me you're not going to last very long into in in this game um that's something that i learned i'm a very logical person very practical so that's why i can enjoy doing it uh, the tool that I'm using right now is Weeble. Um, I'm trading with uh, small caps. Uh, something that we always come back to this, you know, whether you invest into crypto on risky assets or something high, high, very highly risk, make sure that is the money that you can lose. So I'm trading with um, 
a limited amount and seeing how much I can grow in the next uh, few months or so. I do agree with you. It is kind of like a full-time job because uh, as of today, which is April now, uh, markets open at 8 a.m. and they close at 4 p.m. Whereas, you know, during the, without that time change, you know, like uh, during the winter, it's 9 a.m. through 5 p.m. So knowing all this kind of like aligns, changes your schedule a little, a little bit. So if you have a 9 to 5, it's a bit more kind of like uh, more challenging to fit it in your schedule just because you got to be aware, you got to be following the markets. Now, what moves the markets? Sometimes it is technical. There are certain patterns that you can follow and kind of like predict whether it's going to keep going up or down. Uh, and, and you know, aside of that, just put the trade that you want to work for. I I consider myself a swing trader. What does that mean? It means that I pick a position on one day and I trade it on the next day while I sell it on the next day. So for me, it's I follow heavily on the news. Uh, so I have, you know, my one of my monitors, which is like right here. This is literally all news, like what is happening. I use Yahoo Finance to find all my sources of news, uh, sometimes uh, Twitter. Twitter is a really good source for news, believe it or not. Uh, so I have those open, just seeing like what's popping, what's trending. Um, I Right now I'm trading SQQ and TQQ as well as gold and paper trading. So like anything, uh, you need practice. And since I haven't done this in a couple of years now, I'm very rusty, so I am doing paper trading, which is fake money. You trade it with local time, local prices as the move, markets move, but the money that you're using is fake. So this kind of like uh, helps you polish your skills, but also see, know yourself as a trader. That's what I think, because you mentioned something else that some people pick a position and once they start losing, they get emotional about it and they believe that they will, you know, it will grow eventually and they don't yeah. sell it. So yeah. that's why we have risk management. So you have to know what's your risk, the risk that you're taking, how many shares are you buying and what's the stop loss that you're willing to take? Like let's say 1%, 2% uh, or even 3%. Once it reaches to that point, it sells automatically. So you got to be knowledgeable about setting all this up and also taking profits. So don't be greedy. So that's one thing too. And it's just scary to, let's say, trade within one day. I do set my uh, my risk management, you know, like the stop loss and um, take profits. And sometimes I do get greedy in the sense that I don't want, but for me specifically is that uh, this week that just passed by, uh, TQQ, which is the stock market, if you have been following the markets, it went up. It passed my take profit. So, but it was going to be a day trade rather than a swing trade. So I delete that. And actually, it was for the positive, you know? Because for me, it was kind of like just uh, shield, um, shielding myself against that day trade. Since my portfolio is under 25 grand, which is the limit, the minimum that you need to day trade without any limitations. Uh, you know, you only have three day trades per week. Uh, not per week, per five business days. Uh, per five trading days. In that way, you have to know how much you are willing to trade, the limitations that you have as well. So it's all these rules that are set there. Um, but yeah, it's going well. I mean, I haven't lost money, which is good. I think that the, the end of the game is to win, never lose. And if you lose, just see how you can kind of like um, market average. I think that's the term that they use. Uh -huh. uh, Bounce yeah. back. Bounce back, yeah. However, like if you can make it back, uh, the money that you lost or the percentage that you lost, then you're good. And yeah, yeah I just see it prof profitable. Uh, there is a lot of work that takes going into it. So a lot of preparations. And Randy took a course course that I'm using. <laughs> I asked him for the for the logistics. And what it does, it just gives you kind of like a community that talks about these things 
And that's something that I learned the hard way today. Not today. This past week. Don't fucking listen to people. Trust your intuitions when it comes to this. Because one of the traits that I place, and I'm still holding until Monday, and I have to drop that, is for one thing that the creator of this program actually mentioned that uh, he was going to take a position. And I was like, I bet. Let's see how this works. Because I usually never listen to people. And this was the first time I listened to people or like somebody who is more experienced than you. And it sucked. It went, it went to shed hold. Like I lost a certain percentage and it haven't hit the stop loss because I put it at 3%. And yeah, but I probably will hit it by Monday. So I'm seeing it as a trade day. Uh, so yeah, don't listen to people. Trust your intuitions. Most of the time, your intuitions are correct if you know what you're doing. Um, but yeah, another thing too, a lot of people get too technical about these things. Uh, I will say 20% is technical. 80% is what's moving the markets. If you understand what's moving a stock, then you are... Time to time, you're going to be a more successful investor and trader. Uh, you know, the same logistics that I take um, when I'm putting my posi myself in a position for a long-term investment, that's the same kind of positions or kind of like research that I'm doing before I make a trade. And sometimes that does take time and usually it will cost you some cash. So let's say when you, when you saw potential on one trade, and it takes you half an hour to do your due diligence. Between the half an hour, a lot of things can happen. So yeah, but it's a more safer approach for me. And I know myself and I'm like just setting myself for success. And I think that's kind of like the way that I go for it. Right. Yeah, that's pretty, that's so, pretty much it. <clears throat> I go back to like, you know, so I, I bought the course, right? And it's something that I was utilizing to kind of, um, you know, manage myself and try to understand and learn like all the logistics and the fundamentals but mm -hmm. at the end of the day it it's on you to do your due diligence to understand what it is that you're trading why you're trading it what's potentially moving this potential stock or the position that you're in and then executing on a plan that you've developed if mm -hmm. you follow somebody else's plan if you let somebody else dictate the way you're going to make this trade i can promise you that you will be resentful and you will probably make a mistake simply because you didn't do the work and i go back to when you're trading this is a full-time job more mm -hmm. so than anything else simply because you always have to be on point if you take a position you cannot be leaving your computer and then just leaving it there right and mm -hmm. then hopefully you come back and you made money you have to be very diligent that what you do and what you want to happen happens. If it doesn't, you have to set that stop loss or exit out of that position immediately, or mm -hmm. at the very least reduce the risk tolerance, right? So let's say you take a position of a hundred shares or, you know, I mean, you know, we got, we understand the lingo, but some people might not. So a share is essentially a portion of the company, right? So you mm -hmm. take a hundred shares of, or a hundred points of this position of this company, and you think it's going to go up. And then all of a sudden, you know, some news breaks out or overall the market is just not doing well. So that that particular position just starts going down. So rather than you just selling it all together because you have this conviction that, hey, this probably is going to go up. I just need to give it a little bit more time. Let me reduce my risk tolerance, right? Instead of 100 points mm -hmm. or 100 positions or 100 shares, let me reduce it to 50. That mm -hmm. way I have a little bit more wiggle room. And then if I start seeing things trend in the right direction, I'm going to start adding back in until I get to 100. And if I feel like this is going to continue going higher, then I'll continue to average in and do a little bit more. But again, it's managing the risk and constantly being vigilant of the position. The moment you stop caring or the moment you just think that it's just going to work out because, you know, the last couple of trades you've done have worked out in your favor because you didn't really do much other than to just follow somebody's advice, I promise mm -hmm. you, you're going to lose. And then you're going to lose significantly because you become invested and emotional in the trade. And then you just keep piling on until hopefully you make a return on the investment, but you don't. And instead of you, you know, gaining like 10 points or 10% off of the trade that you thought you were going to make, you lose like 20%. And then you're back to square one, or if not, you're in the hole. Now you're trying to make up the deficit. And then you're going to start making worse decisions and trying to balance out 
what you've lost by making more speculative or more mm-hmm. risky plays that don't pan out. Yeah, absolutely. Once again, it all comes down to practice and by failing. Uh, of course, because you're gonna, you're gonna, if you don't know what you're doing and you're just starting, you're gonna lose some cash. So definitely, once again, start by paper trading. That's my suggestion. If you're interested, I think there is this uh norm. I would say on maybe norm, this kind of like sellout point that they uh at, comes attached to trading is the get rich quick scheme, and the reality is not definitely not unless you have a million dollar that you can trade with. It's possible because my paper account is a million dollars and I made 25 grand just within one week. So maybe that you have that money. This it's yes. But if you choose a starting, get in it, get in it to the habit. Once again, it is a routine. Like for me, I can walk you through my routine. I come from the gym, 7 30. Uh 7 30, I'm ready to start doing my research. 8 a.m. the market's open. And that's when I start seeing what happened yes yesterday on the news and all that. Do my research. By nine PM by nine AM I usually do my first trade. If so, if I think there's potential. And by noon, I'm done for the day. I don't see it. I put I leave my trades there because I'm confident that they're gonna grow and I don't look at it. Uh, I do it a little bit different than you mentioned a little bit earlier that you gotta be like on the screen because I already put my manage uh, risk, my take profit, and my stop loss. So, uh, and then by that, on my afternoon, I usually just chill and do some learnings and not related to trading, to be honest, because something else. But yeah, I think you gotta put the work on it. You gotta understand the basic, the fundamentals. And once again, there is some technical level, some lingo that you need to understand, but. Ultimately, it's why you're trading, like the company that you're trading, whether it's Tesla, Amazon, uh, penny stocks, understand why they're going up, understand why they're moving up or down, or even like the meme stocks, you know, like why this fucking meme stock, like there's not logistics, no base level that supports the price of this stock, then why? Then, you know, it's a fucking meme stock, <laughs> it's on Reddit, and yeah, I should actually use Reddit as a, as a source of news too. But yeah, I think that that's kind of like my experience so far with trading. And what I suggest people getting into it, if you're passionate about finance, you like kind of like the game and are you a risk taker, I think it was good for you. It's it's definitely one way to kind of like outsource um you know like your your source income, income source. You also have to keep in mind diversify, uh, and ah, that's a good word. Diversify your prof- diversify your skills, diversify your source of income, and also you gotta keep in mind the taxes are gonna be collected from you. So whatever money you make, always keep that in mind that uh, you will be taxed at a higher level than uh, your long term investment portfolio. So what I'm doing is I'm taking so lost on my long-term portfolio. Well, I took some loss on my long-term portfolio just because with all this uh, sense of the economy with a, you know, no unpredictable unpredictable economics, I had to yeah, yeah. Uh, reformat that. I mean, uh, they re-diversify it and I took some loss. So what that helps me with is that when I take profit from a day trading, I can write it off from that from the loss that I took on my long-term portfolios. So, you know, kind of play the game and yeah, try and win. That's kind of like my thing. Like, it's just winning. That's kind of like the mindset that you got to go. Right? Yeah, so, I like, think... one of the things that uh, I wanted to point out. So, like, yeah, at the end of the day, the stock market is you versus... Well, that, that's the thing, right? It depends on the, the approach that you take. When you're trading, it's you versus somebody else or you versus a company or you versus an algorithm. So, you know, it becomes a game. And then you're, the objective is to try to win the game by doing the proper research, understanding what's going to happen, and then making mm-hmm. the right decision and the right moves and taking the right positions. And if things don't go your way, then you have things like your stop losses, right, which are basically programs that automatically – sell your position or reduce your position or buy more based off of the price action. So whatever's happening with that stock, let's say you were predicting it to go up 
and it goes up to the point that you want it to, then maybe you buy more or you take profits and you just sell out of your position and vice versa, right? If it goes down, you mm -hmm. close out the whole position. If you lose 3% or you reduce it by half and then you reevaluate the next time you check your computer and you check the, the positions that you took. Great. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, like one of the things that it's super important about trading is the fact that if you can make it work, it gives you a source of income that one, you don't have to be location dependent of anywhere, which mm -hmm. is super great, which is one of the reasons why I, I was really attracted to it to begin with. Like if I don't have to be in any particular location to do work, that's awesome because now you can start traveling, you can start doing the things that you want. Um, again, you diversify your income stream. So if it's something you're doing on the side, you're making money doing something else rather than you're just your main gig. And although the taxes are taxed in such a way where it's like basically a main income stream source, mm -hmm. right? So rather than you getting taxed like long-term capital gains tax, which I think is like 10 to 20% or 10 to 15%, you're taxed the equivalent, 23. You're taxed the same way as if you were actually working a full-time job or a part-time job and, you know, you're getting taxed the same way. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, it gives you more freedom and flexibility to work the way you want and do things the way you want to. But that doesn't mean that you are not going to do work, right? Because at the same, in the same way that you just mentioned, right? Like you wake up in the morning, you do your research, you, you know, set your day up so that you understand the positions you're taking. You set the stop losses you take, or you set the, the take profit uh, positions. Like all of that requires work on a daily basis, right? And that's five days a week. I mean, some people can get away with only doing two or three trades in a week and they make the money that they want. But I promise you, it's taken them years to get to that position. Like, it's not something that happens overnight. So you have to be very conscious. If this is something that you, like, if you like finance and you like looking at the stock market and you like predicting how things turn out, if you've never done it, I suggest definitely taking uh, paper trading up so you can try it out, see if you like it. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, maybe enroll in a course. You know, at the end of the day, that's probably only going to run you anywhere from like 200 to 500 bucks. Maybe a little mm -hmm. bit more if you go for the more expensive one. But at the very least, you can start getting yourself in a community of people that actually like doing it and involve yourself a little bit more. Obviously, find the time throughout your day that you have available to do that. And then from there, you can start actually trading your proper money into the market and seeing what happens. Um, because at the end of the day, no matter what you do, it's not going to be the same as actually doing it live, right? Yeah. Like the way you do your paper trading, you're not going to take the same risks as you're going to do with your actual money. Because if That's you true. do and you try a paper trading position or a strategy that doesn't work out and you try it out in your actual positions with your actual money, you're going to lose money. And like you just like, what's the point of that? Right. So definitely paper trading is a great way to start investing mm -hmm. in a course or looking into a group or just doing a lot of research online and then eventually transitioning into it doesn't even have to be so what you mentioned you were probably trading with like 3000 or 3k give or take 3k yeah it doesn't even uh, have to be that it could be like one it can be 100. 500 it can be 100 bucks right mm -hmm. again at the end of the day you're just learning the strategies and then developing yourself and eventually over time if you make the right decisions enough times and you do the right plays enough times that money will grow and then from there you can start scaling and developing more correct uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's kind of like the mindset that you need to go with, like, especially if you are starting, if you just are starting into this, I don't know if it's gig, but if you're just starting on it, definitely use uh, paper trading. There's a lot of tools, there's YouTube videos, a lot of people have done it. Uh, there's a lot of knowledge out there. So, or read books. I remember I read one of those books out there, just to highlight that I have books there. <laughs> Nah, it is. Um, that how people did their trades in the past. Uh, once again, my mindset is set in stone on long term investments, like the money that I am actually growing in, you know, for my future. And uh, like my mission, my purpose is safe and stone on a long term portfolio. I don't touch that. That money that I'm using for trading right now is literally the money that I'm willing to lose. And that's kind of like the mindset that you need to go when you're just starting anything, to be honest, with you're going to lose, like, regardless, like on a day, you're going to make some money, but time to time, when you're just starting something, you're going to lose. 
and that's kind of like the lesson that you go from and you know how resilient are you to this because how resilient and persistent are you on this like understanding why you lost understanding the traits that you took got you there will actually set you up for success uh, later on that's why paper trading i think is the best way to 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 kind of like get your foot wet on the on this trade but yeah uh, i think that's 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 pretty much it um do i see it a long term for me uh for now yes uh at least for this next month like you mentioned the profits aren't i mean i'm not taking any of my profits i mean i'm not cashing out any of my profits yet i'm just growing it uh, I want to see if I can, my goal right now is 25 uh, grand just so I can day trade. If I get to that until uh, my trip is over, then I might not even consider going back to corporate work and just see if I can day trade as a full-time job. But for, that's kind of like my mentality for now. Um, the thing is that I, I do love engineering work. So, you know, it's kind of like, it's, you, you gotta and there's it nothing right. wrong with doing both, right? Like you mm -hmm. can, if you find a good balance, you can do both. Um, that's the beautiful thing about trading is that like you set your schedule mm -hmm. in a very similar way as to like being a personal trainer. I set my schedule. I work with my clients the way I want. This to. is a conversation between. That's why I kind of got what said here should be taking his legal advice in some way. But we the way I got the reason why I got in any way is because Take what resonates and leave the rest. Hours. And the reason why I got into training is. I like the fact that you can kind of set your own hours, right? You work the days that you want. You work the hours that you want. You have to find a balance, obviously. So there's going to be some compromise. But if you figure it out, you can kind of set your own hours. Um, but it takes time to get to that point. And that's one of the things that you have to understand. With all of this, you have to fail. You have to learn mm -hmm. and understand it's going to take time. So you have to have patience. If you don't have these things, then this is not what you want to do. Yeah, I think uh, the downside about trading, especially in the U.S. market, I mean, it will be a different story if you're doing Forex or crypto. I think that's kind of like more interesting about setting your own schedule. But if you're trading within the U.S. market, you are limited to the time that the market's open and the market's close, the NASDAQ. Um, so that would be like, for example, for me, uh, I'm already setting this schedule right now, that 8 to 12 just because in the next month or so we'll be living in Bali and it will be 8 p.m. to midnight over there. So I'm already kind of like in the mindset that I need to just work this this window when the market is open here. Because after that, it will be, you know, during the night hours. And I'll fucking even sleep, mate. So, so that's kind of like the reasoning behind what I'm doing all day. Like you can definitely do all day uh, trading. But for me, it's more about... How can I balance my schedule now and fit it when I travel, when I do my traveling? So, yeah, it does open a lot of doors, definitely, if you're pro profitable, especially if you go live. Right now, going to Europe is one of the most attractive things um, because living expenses are cheap and you're still earning dollars. So, you know, that's kind of like the big plus, at least for now, for somebody who's young. And, but yeah, unless you're super successful and unless you're extraordinary on it and you can make your money from it, I don't see it as a sustainable, long-term, safe haven type of thing. Like you can make a million, but then after you make the million, you need to find some other long-term investments that uh, are less riskier just because... You know, if you want the family, like, for example, I do, I want my family and I want to provide and be safe, I provide safety to my family. I eventually need to transition to something more secure. And that's why I have in my engineering degree on. That's the whole reason I started engineering, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah. That's playing it smart, right? Like, if you don't do it correctly, then what you're going to do is hope for things to work out. And mm -hmm. hoping for things to work out is usually going to lead you to be very disappointed and not actually making good decisions, right? Like you're going to mm -hmm. have to become, and again, it goes back to trading. If you make a bad decision and then you get emotionally invested, you will start making worse decisions and then sink yourself deeper into the hole where eventually you find yourself like shit because lost mm -hmm. a shit ton of money. Uh, and I have absolutely no way to come back from that or I have no idea how to come back from that. Trading is 
again, like that's why people call it gambling. Like if you don't understand what you're doing, it can become gambling. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have to be very financially savvy, right? If you make a big win, you should be transitioning those wins into something that's going to be more long term, something that's going to actually make you make more money by reproducing itself, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where you start investing in things like assets. Um, you know, start looking at businesses, right? So there's a lot of ways where you can correctly or not even correctly, but at least be more effective and more efficient with the winnings. Um, mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the only way for you to win is to lose. And the only way for you to lose is by trying and actually mm -hmm. doing the work that's necessary in order to get to that position. Uh, I definitely like trading. If it's something that you can manage, more power to you. If it's not totally understandable, I tried it myself. I mm -hmm. probably try it again at a later date when I have more time, more flexibility. Um, but it's difficult. It's not easy. You have to be somebody that's true to your convictions. Um, like you mentioned, you made a decision based off of what other people were thinking and it didn't pan out. Right. Yep. So you have to be true to yourself and the, the strategies and the research that you do. But if you can make it work, I definitely think it's something that is a nice little side thing that you can have, right? Like it's a part-time job. Maybe mm -hmm. it's something you have on the side to do for, I mean, for some people, it could be a game, right? So they do it for fun. For other people, they do it as a way to make more money so that they can take that money, reinvest it, and, you know, put it in assets or buy more stock that they actually want to. Um, but, yeah, trading is definitely something that it's cool, but it's definitely difficult. Yeah, kind of like something that you mentioned about, you know, people who do, do it for fun and people who actually do it because they need the money, they need to make successful. I tend to time realize that the people who do it for fun, they are willing to take more risk. Actually, no, it's the other way. People who do it for fun, they're not willing to take as much risk as somebody who is uh, living out of from it. So if you're living from your trades, you are tempted to put yourself in a riskier position. No, you're, that's a devil's gambling because you can either big win or you can lose win. So right now I'm looking at it more as a hobby, like I mentioned, but another thing too is like, you know, creating and buying assets later on. And this is something that I kind of noticed out of the course that you, you had, I kind of like you I'm using is that this guy didn't make as much money from trading. He made the money selling that course. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, for sure. There's a lot of affiliate programming and all that. Mm -hmm. So definitely uh, be cautious of that because a lot of the things that uh, these courses sells you, you can easily find it on YouTube or just reading books for free. Um, it's just nice to have everything there. But, you know, and also the community, uh, just to share your ideas, share your thoughts. I think that's kind of like the most value that I have gotten so far. But yeah, aside of that, the technical knowledge, that's something that I already knew, honestly. So yeah, kind of like just polishing it. But yeah, uh, trading is not for everybody. If you have the guts for it, go for it. If you never done it and you want to try it out, definitely try it out. You might like it. Uh, it is fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it. Cheers. Peace out. No, Cheers. that's all. It's empty. <laughs>